Hi everyone, it's Laurel here, and I'm here today with a card from start to finish, uh, and it's going to be featuring some a stencil with some distress paint. I'm also going to throw in some stain and an ink pad as well from the distress line. And this is the card that we're going to be making. I absolutely love the watercolored background. This is the stencil I'm using. It's by My Favorite Things. It's called Wildflowers. And I just love all the different flowers on here and, and the scenes that you can build with these different flowers. This is the first My Favorite Things stencil I bought, and it's a very sturdy stencil. I'm very impressed with the quality of it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lay down my first flower first and then I'm going to build from there. So I thought I was going to kind of mask off each area as I went and I'm going to do that for the first flower but then I'm not going to do it anymore and you'll see why. I found out I just really didn't need to mask anything off because I can be very careful how I lay down my paint. Now I'm going to be starting with a paint color called Mode Lawn. Now this particular bottle, um, I think what I did at one point was I left the lid off so that the top there got dried out so the paint isn't really flowing through the top as well as it should be and it's just with this particular bottle all of my other distress paints are fabulous and the ink flows out the top just as it should be but with my mode lawn due to I'm sure an error on my end um, it's just dried out so the paint is not really coming out you can see I'm dabbing and smushing and squeezing and doing everything and just a little bit's coming out so I'm going to actually pour some of that paint onto my craft mat and what I do is actually spill it onto my craft mat, so I definitely had to edit that out of the video because I wasn't happy with myself. So the next scene here is uh, ink kind of smeared all over the place. <laughs> That's me trying to clean it up. So I'm just going to go in with my paintbrush here with the Mode Lawn and just the Mode Lawn color for now, uh, just to make sure I can fill in all the areas of that stencil because the paint isn't flowing out the top very well. And I'm going to go ahead and play some music and you can see how I apply the rest of the paints on. I'm also going to go in with a different color distress stain and also a orange ink pad because I didn't have those colors in the paints. So you can see how great all of these distress products work together.
happy with how that looks. You can use, I use, I use the uh, Right Persimmon Distress Pad and then I went in with a peeled paint distress stain and they all just work so great together and I was able to incorporate all the colors that I want uh, here. So I'm just kind of going in and just finishing it off and I'm pretty happy with how it looks. I want to go in and add a, just a little bit more of those um, red poppy flower things. I don't know what flowers are called. <laughs> the little red berry looking things. Um, so I'm going in kind of finishing that off and I wanted to tone down the, the brightness of the color. So that's actually some picket fence distress paint. And it's perfect for just adding kind of a whitewash look and also toning down the colors. So I'm just going in with that distress paint and I'm just kind of punching it on there a little bit, just doing a little bit of dabbing just on the different colored flowers. And just to get out, this is to, again, totally optional. This is just, you know, just me and my personal preference. And I'm going to finish off that one little flower with the Picket Fence Distress Paint, and then we're ready to move on. And I'm going to um, fill in that white background. I, I thought it would be real pretty to create a sky. With a sky typically means blue. So with blue is, you guessed it, I'm going to be using my favorite color Distress Ink line product, Peacock Feathers. <laughs> I love Peacock Feathers. I try to tie that into every project I make. <laughs> so there it is. I'm kind of dabbing a little bit out onto my craft mat there. And then I am really saturating that in with some water because I want a light wash of the blue of the peacock feathers there. I'm trying not to go over the floral images and the stems. I don't want to uh, change the color. So I'm going in very carefully, selectively painting around the, the background there with some very watered down peacock feathers. Now you could have done this with a distress pad or distress stain or whatever. All the products again just work wonderfully together. So I've got that nice blue background there. And then I thought I needed to create a frame. So I'm just going around the outline of the card there with the peacock feathers and got myself a nice little uh, border created with that. And then I'm just going in and blending in some of the brush strokes in the background there. I have a little tiny bit dab of that red paint down there. So I'm going to go back in with my peacock feathers and cover that up. And again, you just do whatever you want to do until you get the look that you're that you're going for. And, and that's exactly what I do when I create. I don't do sketches or anything. I just kind of go with the flow and whatever looks good to me, looks good to me. I don't care if it's necessarily following the rules. <laughs> now it's time to put the card together and I'm using that Love You die cut by Simon Says Stamp. I've gone ahead, it's called the Small Love You die. I've gone ahead and die cut it out probably five or six times and layered it on top of each other so you have a really thick piece. And I put it on the back of some masking tape so it kind of holds it in place. And I'm stamping this Versamark ink over the Love You. It's a great, clear, sticky ink. And I'm going to be doing some heat embossing. Now, in hindsight, I probably should have used black cardstock. And if I make this card again, I will use black cardstock. And you'll see why in just a second. Now, this is some Zing black embossing powder that has a glitter finish to it. So it's really cool. And it gives you that very subtle, sparkly feel there. And um, having that tape just for me it helps me hold the, the die cuts better. Obviously, you don't want to touch the, the dies themselves or you'll take away the uh, embossing powder that you have there. And I have this little funnel thingamabob here, as you can see, that where I don't, I'm a mess when I use glitter and embossing powder. I'll just be honest, it gets everywhere. So this little funnel does help me uh, make less of a mess than I would normally. So I'm just kind of tapping it all into the funnel there and then I can get it all back into the the bottle it came in without making too much of a mess. So I've gone ahead and adhered the card to the, the panel to a card base. I just chose a purple a card base that I had in my stash. And this is the way that I adhere this stuff down. Glossy Accents is a great strong adhesive. So all I do is just squirt out a bunch on my craft sheet and then I I just smear the die cut all over the craft sheet until it's got coverage all the way on the back. People do a bunch of different things to adhere their stuff down. Uh, this is what works for me. And I also run around the edges with a black marker to hide all of the white cardstock. This is why I said I probably should have used uh, black cardstock. I could have eliminated that step of having to go around the, out, the edges in the back with a black marker. So I'm going ahead and putting that love you down there and I'm going to put an acrylic block over the top of it just for a few minutes to make sure it gets all nice and stuck. And that's it, we're done. 
Thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in any of the supplies, they are listed below in the YouTube description or over on my blog. Thanks for watching.